I cannot function as the Batman until you are deactivated. Here's a look at the new DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series, figure number 43, Hardak. Hardak is an acronym that stands for Holographic Analytical Reciprocating Digital Computer. It was an artificial intelligence system created by CEO Carl Rosum. Rosum's creation developed a self-conscience that allowed it to have free will over its actions and thus creating duplicates of humans, including Rhonda Duane, James Gordon, Harvey Bullock, and even Batman. We're going to get this review underway by first figuring out how tall Hardak stands, taking it to the very tips of its ears, the ears of its cowl, that is, and stopping the tape measure right there. According to the tape measure, Hardak Batman stands at six and a half inches in height, which in centimeters, let me go ahead and do that right now for you. You're looking at 16.6, 16, .6, 16 6 centimeters tall. Would like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at DC Collectibles who were nice enough to send a couple of these figures my way. We're going to have a look at these in some future reviews. Before we have a look at future reviews, before we have a look at Hard Act, some of the things that come included with the figure are, of course, a product catalog. Advertising some of the things we've already looked at on this channel, case in point, like the Expressions Pack of Joker, Expressions Pack of Harley Quinn, and some potentially upcoming released figures like the Scarecrow, the Grey Ghost, and the more retro designed Two-Face. We had gotten the more uh, new adventures of Batman Two-Face as the first release. Now we're going to be getting ourselves a classic release. Also getting ourselves included in this figure, you get yourself an instruction guide. There's not really much to be said for the instruction guide, simply just showing you how hands change out, heads change out, bada bing, bada boom, that's your instructions. You and put those to the side. Now, for accessories, you're probably noticing right off the bat that Hardak Batman doesn't come with a, an included display stand. One of the first instances that I can think of off the top of my mind in which we have not gotten ourselves a display stand with these figures. To be fair though, I feel like there's something that's been changed to the legs. The legs feel slightly thicker, sturdier, and even like the feet themselves feel like you get a more firmer planted footprint when you are displaying the figure on a shelf or wherever you want to display your Batman animated figures. So even though you don't technically get a display stand, you do get, however, what I think to be an improved figure, at least from its construction. Of the accessories, however, it does come included with. It comes with its swashbuckling sword, of which Batman does fight hard at, kind of in that little armory hallway leading to the edge of the cliff of the Batcave. Hardak grabs this sword and begins swinging it at Batman, having already suffered the scars that you're seeing on the figure currently right now. Now, the sword can fit into either one of his hands, and it fits relatively secure. If you sit it on an angle, it sits a little looser. If you turn it inward, where like this part of the handle touches and grazes itself against the fingers, then the sword doesn't seem to go as, uh, as loose, and uh, you can display the figure with the sword. One of the other things that comes included with the figure as well, we'll put that right there, put the figure right there for the, for the time being, is he does come also with his little laser fingers. Hardax shooting at Batman around the beakers and various chemicals in his laboratory. And he's shooting the little lasers until Batman finally splashes him with one of the beakers and erodes, corrodes, and otherwise damages the face of Batman. To change out the hands, we're just going to simply grab the figure's arm. Just slide that right off. Couldn't be any bit easier than that. And pop that right back into place. And you've got yourself hard act with this finger laser. Pew, 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 pew. So it, as an option, a possible option for which you can display the figure. Place this back. There we go. The other accessory we'll talk about is his damaged head. But before we do that, I feel compelled, obliged to talk about at least the one that currently is on Batman's shoulders or hard axe shoulders. And that is the slightly half scarred uh, hard act Batman. Somewhat ironic when you really think about it that the origin of Two Face in Batman the Animated Series actually caused was caused by an explosion. Harvey Two Face, of course, was running 
across the bridge and the explosion hit him at the side. Hardak actually, his origin, or at least the reveal to the side of his face, is a little bit more accurate, a little closer to what we would have gotten with Two-Face. Just kind of think that's somewhat funny. So for his head, his defaulted head is that of Batman, or at least one half of Batman. We initially see him in the Batcave sporting these red eyes until eventually, again, we get that scarring showing on the other side. I really do like the contrast of having the half and half, almost night and not quite day, but the good, the bad, the two-face of Batman. Kind of really like the contrast between the two. The blue on the side, of course, is trademarked to Hordax coloring. Hardax coloring, I want to see it, Hordak. Uh, it does have some really nice blue. You've got the big, large eyes, sort of an endoskeletal-looking Terminator design, probably taking maybe some cues from the original Terminator film. The interesting thing about this head sculpt, though, is if you spin it around, you've got Batman's head draped down to the side. Now, this may be jarring for the fact that, of course, based on this type of appearance, he had damage caused by chemicals, not by him moving his face away. Unfortunately, the mask and this face piece is not separate from the rest of his cape. So to sort of avoid having to see that all the time, you would, of course, want to have the fig figure facing forward. This plays then a little bit more to this head sculpt, in which you could explain then the justified reasonings for why the head, the peeled away face of Batman, as is folded back the way that it is. You can't move it, by the way, it's attached in place. He does come with this version of his head sculpt as well. And I really like this head sculpt too. The thing too is that the neck, the way that they've painted the back of the neck, lends itself a little bit being more closer to using this head sculpt than this one right here. Would have loved also to see that they could have released this figure with a third head option in which it would have only been Batman's head fully realized with the red eyes. I think that would have been a nice touch as well. Now to change out this head, just going to grab the torso section here and just pop this off. It sits just on a ball joint. You just go wiggle, 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 wiggle it off. It is a bit of a tighter ball joint. You just gonna wiggle it off, pop it off like that, and then just go ahead and replace it to the head that you want to use. We're going to go ahead and use this head sculpt and just pop that in place. It doesn't. It, it looks like it's a bulbous ball joint to have to contend with, but rather it's not that difficult to pop the head back into place. Wiggling the head might be to pop it off, might be the trickier of the two. And then you've got this head sculpt to go with as an alternative to this one right here. Again, you could go with either or, but the peeled back Batman face works, I think, a little bit better with this head sculpt than this one right here, because he already has that cowl in place. As for the rest of Batman's body, it's pretty much standard issued Batman. Other than, of course, oh right, yeah, the big corroded section exposing his hard act uh, endoskeletal interior, his torso underneath the costume here. I like the way that it's been kind of ripped away. You can kind of see the peeled back layers on the back costume exposing some wires, circuitry, and the cogs all basically come together to let this mechanized monster move his way through. Love the little colorings and added nods to uh, the reference points to the show. I like that they make it accurate enough to looking like the episode itself. Like I said, though, for the rest of the figure's body, it seems to me pretty much issued, standard issued to regular Batman. Although, again, I can't help but feel like the legs are different to the ones we have gotten before. Batman's cloth cape is a nice addition. I like the fact that they've given us a cloth cape. The quality of the cape feels good, too. It has a natural flow and a natural drape to it. I'm glad that they're using like this type of material versus something like a plastic, which just has a much more less forgiving nature to it. The cloth definitely, as you can see, works a lot better. And much like in the show, the interior of the blue is then uh, matched with the, or contrast, I should say, to the black that's on the outer section right there. So let's have a look at Batman's articulation. I kind of feel as if, I'm going to just pop the head back off. I just feel as if I like this design of Batman a little bit more when it's got this particular head sculpt in place. And I guess really, if you wanted to, is also, you could take the cape right off. Here, I'm going back and forth with myself. You could take the cape off completely if you wanted to, and then just replace it with 
the Hardak fully exposed head, if you want to go that route as well. But I think for the sake of wrapping this review up and my own personal preference when it comes to displaying this figure, I would likely go to the half and half. I kind of like that. A little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll. This is going to be the way I'm going to be displaying the figure. So let's have a look at this guy's posability. His head rotates all the way around. You've already probably seen how the hinges work as well. When we took the head off, it was quite very much visible. He does have a hinge. It's right in there, which allows the head to slightly tilt forward slightly tilt back and of course you can rotate the head all the way around. Uh, the upper torso does not have any crunching however you can rotate the waist all the way around. The arms hinge out you can rotate those all the way around and he also has a bend in the elbow, a rotation in the forearm, a rotation in the glove and a rotation in the hand back and forth hinging back and forth. The legs swing out quite considerably out when you really see it here forward and back, bend at the knee, a double bend at the knee to boot. And speaking of boots, he does have swivel back and forth on his feet and a hinge up and down. Ankle rocker, you got your ankle rocker, it's right there. To note as well, something to draw your attention also to, leading me to believe that they've sort of retrofitted and refitted these figures with slightly new tweaked bodies. You'll also notice that Batman has pegs on the undersides of his feet, leading to something that I discussed earlier in these earlier reviews of the Batman animated series figures from the folks over at DC Collectibles. Personally speaking, while I did think the display stand was a neat touch, representing the front, the side and three quarter turns of the, the character designed from the, the actual show, I much favor, personally speaking, I prefer a Batman that actually just has peg holes on the undersides of his feet. It kind of opens the door a little bit to how you can display the figure as well. And it seems like because he is believing to be representing using new larger legs, it seems that standing the Batman figure doesn't seem to be an issue whatsoever. For final looks, I've got the computer-controlled Kate Crusader sporting some finger lasers. Pew, 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 pew. One potential way that you can display the figure, or you can display it also with the sword, which we've looked at in this review. I really do like the look of Hardak. I always like the neat design elements, kind of incorporating some Terminator-esque nods into that one few episodes, I should say, the several episodes that he appeared in. A two-part episode and then a standalone episode. Hardak has one of those memorable traits to him, kind of the polar negative opposite to Batman. A darker foil, if you will. Uh, DC Collectibles, I think, has done a really good job on this figure. And again, I feel like there's something different to the construction of these figures. This Batman, specifically, I feel like the plastic is a little bit different, and I feel like the standing of the figures are a little bit better than the ones we had gotten before. So, some good improvements, I must say, from DC Collectibles. And again, I just love the fact that we get ourselves a hard act. Now, the hard act is also going to be coming out, I believe, in the same wave as the Grey Ghost and the Scarecrow, so keep your eyes peeled. Ooh, I never like saying that, but I still keep always saying that. Keep your, eye peel keep your eyes peeled, my friends, my colleagues of the mob. Keep your eyes peeled for when these guys will be hitting comic book store shelves. Uh, today we were having a look, though, at the DC Collectibles. This was the Batman Animated Series figure number 43. This was Hardak as Batman and the finale. And half of his face is burnt off. And, of course, he's got some damage to his torso as well. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my reviews of the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series figures, there's a playlist for you. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. <gasps> More videos will be coming your way. Rest assured, guaranteed, stamp seal of approval. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.